Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to construct some confidence intervals with Minitab Express. Now, this is the scenario that actually does not happen very often, and that is when we, um, we're estimating a population mean, but for some reason or another, we know sigma. This doesn't happen, but it is, it's, it's used primarily as sort of an educational tool to get the process down. Um, you probably would never do this. You are probably more interested, if you're doing an estimation on a population mean, of using uh, a T distribution, which is in a different video. Um, okay, so but for 7.2, we assumed we had the population standard deviation, and we were seeking a confidence interval on the mean. And you can do this one of two ways, with just information about your sample, or you can also do it when you have the raw data. So the first case we're going to do is assume we just have our summary data, as it's called in uh, Minitab Express. Okay, so we want to get the 95% confidence interval for the mean mu when we have a sample of 35, a sample mean of 72.5, and a population standard deviation of 10.2. I believe this example is about the heart rates of uh, healthy adult men. And uh, we got an answer in the book, 69.1 to 75.9. So let's see how you do that with uh, Minitab Express. It's really easy. So you come over here. This is a one sample inference, uh, inferential statistics method. Um, and here we use the Z distribution because the population standard deviation is known. So we click Z. Now we don't have column data, we actually have summarized data. That's where we have the sample size, the sample mean, stuff like that. Okay, so here they ask us for the sample size, that was 35. Sample mean, 72.5. And down here it's the known standard deviation. So that's where we put in 10.2. We're not performing a hypothesis test. When you click over to options, we get to choose our confidence level. In this case, it was 95. That's the default value. We don't have to worry about this alternate hypothesis because we're not doing a hypothesis test. You click OK, and lo and behold, there's our confidence interval on the far right, 69.121 to 75.879. When we did that in the book using the Z table, we got the same interval, 69.1. 75.9. A lot easier and faster in Minitab if you know what buttons to click and what values to put in for where. Okay, so the next case is if you have raw data, right? And so I have some raw data down here in an Excel spreadsheet. And it's just some sample data. It's uh, 40 numbers um, that actually were sampled from a population, and miraculously I knew that standard deviation for that population was 200 and um, the actual population mean was 800 but that's um, that, that's not necessarily reflected in the sample data so I'm going to take my sample data and estimate the population mean so I need to copy it out of Excel copy and I come over to here put it in mini tab express paste now I can create my confidence interval you go back up to the same place, one sample, it is a Z test. The sample data is in a column. We're going to take C1, the sample data, and we're going to send it over. And then the you know miraculously known standard deviation of the population we do have. It's 200. We're not performing a hypothesis test. We'll leave it at the 95% confidence interval. You click OK, it calculates the mean, the standard deviation, everything needed to create a confidence interval, and then spits it out for you. Confidence interval is 732.37 to 856.33 from this sample data here with the known population standard deviation of 200. All right, so again, this section is not very realistic, and there's a very good chance you're watching the wrong video because in practice you'll be using a t-test for means and not a, or a t-distribution for means and not the z-distribution um, but that's in the next video or in the following video after that alright so we're done